Hey everyone, welcome to another Sage tutorial video. Today we're going to be talking about buttons and switches. Probably our most underrated component, as almost every single project has or has a need for a button or switch. The good news is that almost every button or switch uses the same circuit and the same type of coding. So let's jump right in. The most common button is your standard push button with two contactors on the back. Whenever you're pushing a button, all you're really doing is smashing two pieces of wire together completing a circuit. The second most popular are called switches. Now, another name for a switch is just a latching button, essentially doing the same function as a button, except it stays in one state. So once you smash those two pieces of metal together, a button will pop back open while a switch will remain stuck together and keep the circuit closed. We also have waterproof buttons, illuminated buttons, locking buttons, the ever popular breadboard buttons, um, more illuminated buttons. Here we have a latching button. So same way a switch keeps itself pressed after it switch. Here we have a latching button. Once you push it, once it stays locked, push it again and it pops open. Very similar to a clicky pen. You can tell by the third wire in the back that it's also illuminated. We have video game buttons, smooth buttons, um, special function buttons, heavy duty switches, and dip switches. This last version is really used when you're just trying to set a switch and leave it. Maybe you want to set a feature within a game. Um, they're pretty light duty, not meant for something that's to be switched on and off. The point is there's tons of different buttons and switches out there. Very often a student will become familiar with one type of button, like a breadboard button, and force that into their project, when really it should be the other way around. Find the button or switch that works best for your project, and then we'll show you right here how to use it. Hey everyone, welcome to the shop. Uh, we're gonna look at a, some circuits and different types of buttons and switches now. Remember that the goal of the button circuit is just to alter whether or not voltage is or isn't going into a digital pin. The Arduino doesn't understand what pressed or toggled or flipped or on or off means. It just wants to know is there or is there not voltage going into the circuit. Let's take a look at some buttons now. We have here an assortment of switches based on the number of contacts found inside each switch. The most common switcher button has just two contacts. Pushing or flipping the button will connect and disconnect the two contacts. The next most common has three contacts. This usually has two separate states, usually a left or a right, an on, a middle, and an off. What this does is connects the middle contactor, referred to as COM, to either of the outer pins. This is very common in video game buttons where there's three contactors. The middle one will be labeled as COM, and the other two will usually be labeled NO and NC, normally open and normally closed. Normally open means when I'm not pushing the button, that counter contactor is not connected to the COM contact, and normally closed means it normally is connected to the COM contactor, and pushing the switch will open that. The last most common is when we have four pins, this is actually the same as a simpler two pin connector, but due to the fact that it's an illuminated switch, the extra two contactors are just to turn the LED on and off. And the other two just work like regular contactors contacted when the button is pressed. The last most common one we have is a lot of people like to do home innovations. Works like the regular switch. We have two contactors. They get connected and disconnected when I toggle the switch. Let's take a look at the circuit in a little bit more detail. In this case, we're using pin D2, and we're trying to sense when there is or is not voltage in D2. So the simplest case is when I close the switch or button, whatever I'm using, the five volts travels through this pink line all the way around into D2, giving me a high voltage. The problem is what happens when the switch is open. Now I have what's called a floating pin. I don't know if this pin is high or low. To make up for that, we connect it through the same end of that switch as the pin, through a resistor to ground. What this does is when the switch is open, I know D2 will be low because it's connected to a ground source through the resistor. When I close my button or switch, D2 then flicks high, it was connected to five volts. Let's take a look at what this looks like in real life. Here we have our switch in the middle. One side is connected to five volts through the red wire and the other side is connected to pin D2 in this case through the green wire. We also have to connect the pin side of the switch to ground through a resistor, and that's what this black wire is doing. Any resistor is fine. We're just trying to prevent a short circuit. 
again, like we mentioned multiple times, the same circuit would be used no matter what type of switch, whether it be a toggle, a push button, illuminated, or a home switch. I could even remove these alligator clips, put them on a different switch, it would be the same circuit and the same code, no matter what type of switch or button you're connecting. Now that we've taken a look at the circuitry behind buttons and switches, let's take a look at the coding. Remember, the Arduino doesn't understand whether or not a button is pressed or not pressed, a switch is on or off. It's only looking whether or not there is or isn't voltage inside of a digital pin. If you could understand that, then you'll understand that the coding is essentially the same no matter which button or switch you're using. We just want to check whether or not there is or isn't voltage inside of a digital pin. Okay, let's open up our Arduino IDEs now. Using the Arduino IDE 2.0, if you haven't already upgraded, now's a good time. So the first thing we're going to do is going to set pin mode. Now there's two different things a pin could be in an Arduino. It could either be an input or an output. An output, which we've done already, sets up the pin to send voltage outwards from the Arduino to turn a light on or off. An input sets the Arduino up to check whether or not there's voltage coming into the pin. Oftentimes, if a light or a button isn't behaving, the first thing I would check is whether or not the pin modes have been set up correctly. So because this is a button and we're checking whether or not voltage is coming into or not coming into the Arduino, it's going to be set up as an input. The second thing I'm going to do is set up serial begin 9600. And this is because I want to check the status of my button. Often students think that the serial monitor is used for projects when you want to print something on your screen. But in actuality, the most function comes from the serial monitor when you're using it to check your coding or circuitry. By printing the status of the button, I could check whether or not my button circuit is actually working. So in my void loop now, the way you check whether or not there's voltage in a digital pin is by using the digital read function. So digital read, and there's only one parameter that goes in there, and that's the pin number. You don't set it high or low. I'm checking pin two whether or not it is high or low right now. Um, just doing that would be okay, but we want to do something with that information. So I'm going to declare a global variable at the top of my screen. I'm going to call it int x and set it equal to zero. A global variable is a variable that could be used anywhere throughout the code. If I would declare my variable just in my void setup or just in my void loop, I wouldn't be able to use it throughout the code. A global variable or a variable declared at the very top of your screen could be used anywhere throughout your code. So now back to my void loop, I'm going to declare x equals digital read pin 2. So now my x variable will contain either a 1 or a 0 depending on whether or not there is or isn't voltage in pin 2. And lastly, I'm going to print that information on the screen. So now I'll have 1s and zeros flowing up and down my serial monitor based on whether or not my button or switch in pin 2 is pressed or activated. There is one shortcut that some students might be familiar with. I can just serial.print the actual digital read. Um, I don't have to store that information in a variable. Depends on how you want to code and depends what you want to do with that information. So in this case, I'm actually going to store it in variable x and then print um, variable x. Now let's do something with that information. The easiest thing to do would be to turn on and off another digital pin based on whether or not your button is pushed. So I'm going to go back to my void setup and I'm going to declare pin 13 as an output. Perhaps you'll have a light or some other um, item in pin 13, a buzzer, and I'm going to turn that on and off based on the state of my button. So I'm going to come back down to my void loop and start an if statement, if x. Now, in microcontroller talk, we refer to having and not having voltage as high or low. If the pin has voltage in it, we refer to the pin as high. If it doesn't have voltage and is connected to ground, we refer to the pin as low. So I'm going to use a double equal sign because I don't want to set the x variable too high. I want to check is the x variable equal to high. And that's a double equal sign. Is it equal to? So if x is high, the easiest thing I'm going to do is digital write pin 13 high. I'm going to turn on pin 13 if I press my button. And I'm going to couple that with an else statement to turn off my light if I'm not pushing the button. Right? Remember, you need to also turn off your light when you're not pushing the button. So if X is high, if I am pushing my button, I will turn on whatever's plugged into pin 13. And if I'm not pushing my button, I'll turn off whatever's plugged into pin 13. The simplest thing you can do with a button, I do want to talk, talk about one big misnomer. Very often students will declare in their global variable 
x equals digital read 2. And are under the assumption that the x variable will now forever contain the state of pin 2. And it will behind the scenes switch from 0 to 1, which is absolutely not the case. The only time the x variable gets updated is when the void loop is on line 10. So when could this become an issue? Perhaps I have a delay in my code. And at the bottom here, I'm adding delay 10,000. I have a 10 second delay, perhaps I'm doing something else. During those 10 seconds, the student might be pushing the button, flicking the switch, and wondering why the light's not turning on. The only time the Arduino is gonna check the status of the voltage in pin two and update the X variable is on line 10. So if you have a 10 second delay here on line 18, it's not that there isn't voltage going in and out of pin two. There is every time you push the button, but the Arduino is not checking. The Arduino doesn't care. In fact, the Arduino doesn't even know. So it's an important when you do have a button that you want to constantly be checking, is it pushed and you don't want to miss a beat. It's important to not have any delays in their code. If you need to have delays, there are other work workarounds. We call them non-blocking routines and interrupt routines. But for now, if you have a button in your circuit and you want to make sure you, that you don't miss any of the presses, the simplest thing to do is to make sure you have no delays inside your code.